I'm going to show this one here and then up in the microscope what you see when uh, I put the microscope on now. And it's this, oops, hold on, take it easy, I'm coming. All right, here we go. It's, of course, this little microscope here, the Celestrum. And um, I'm going to show the surface up here, and then we're going to start looking at the muscle fibers and then the tendons and then the layer of blood at the bottom, which I showed before. Look at layer of blood right there. And it is identical to what you see right there. There's a the layer of blood, and then there's their muscle right up above it. Same, it's identical, same thing. So, um... I'm just going to try to make that comparison. Well, my good friends, it doesn't get much better than this. This was from uh, someone called uh, Margaret Nauta. And she sent me a ton of pictures about this particular area that she has. And this particular structure grabbed my attention. Now, I understand this very well. Because I have one here, the same thing and I will show it to you in my microscope. They call these, in, in certain conditions, these would turn into what they call banded iron formations. We're going to go over that because Yale, it, you know, just put out a thing about banded iron. It's totally wrong, and I'm going to explain what banded iron really is. Now, this is tendon. This is the area that glues tendon to muscle. It's just, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. When I show you the, and when you see where they are all around the world, it'll just flip your mind right out of your head. That anchors down here into those balls and so forth that these straps attach to. And that is structurally solid as hell. Now, this glue is unbelievable it attaches this to this I have never seen these disassociate from this glue although that you they break at the abrupt transitions they don't break at the glue it's what I found now I could be wrong a surgeon may say something different but I find that they snap like see this right here let me see if I can home in on it I'll show you the one I have of here of mine that is very, very obvious, the abrupt transition. You can see these little, this little area running right down here. That is the abrupt transition. It comes right after the glue. Then there is another one that comes after that, which is right over here somewhere. And then there's the last one where it, the muscle just breaks away and falls apart. Now, mine are extremely obvious, the, the abrupt transitions. And mine is not splayed open like this. They're actually just flat boards. They look literally like boards. And the, the this one here is deteriorated a little more than mine. Mine, the muscle, is just so absolutely flawless. This is unbelievably flawless and shows all the attachments where the blood is is servicing this. And it's just, it's, uh, it's just un undeniable. And my other end is broken off right here. You see this? This is where the other ab abrupt transition is. Mine broke and it's gone. This has gone away. So we can look into these bundles. All right. So, Margaret, thank you for your input. And this was what makes Mud Fossil University unique among learning institutions. This is a learning institution, not a teaching institution. This is an institution where you come on your own, of your own accord, to learn, to see, to in investigate, to question. But factually, everything here has to be factual. You know, we're looking at the ancient texts, we're trying to make our understanding of what they mean based on the findings we find in here, because they have meaning. To me now, we're in a whole new universe. By the way, this little spot right here, <laughs> that's not your average skin cell. Uh, so this is, um, I don't know what this is particularly, what creature it is. I've looked over here at the skin of it and so forth. And she has a lot of other shots, fleshy areas. And uh, I really don't know what it is, to, what kind of creature it is. But this, I do understand this is tendon, the glue, muscle. The a 
abrupt transitions. That's another abrupt transition there. And there's probably one over here. They There's several where places where the actual biology just changes. I'll show you. I, I have a lot of information on this. So I'll, you're going to have to stick around to see it. But I have the information. All right. You see what you're looking at right there? Everybody says, oh, yeah, it's a mud fossil. And guess what? I made that out of chicken tissue in the mud fossil process. I'm going to move it out of the way. And look at what's underneath is the skin from the top of that chunk of meat that I just showed you. It's sand. It is sand, and it is not much different from the mud fossil that I made. Now, this took less than a year to make this. Now, you see the black there? That's the black, and then it goes into this tenderness looking stuff. This is my mud fossil. I made this, so don't tell me that I didn't, because I did. And there it goes into, <laughs> this is the same stuff. It's the same identical stuff. I have this. <laughs> That's it right there. So it's not that, you know, and they say, oh, millions of years. Like hell. This is, I made this in less than a year. And it's a very simple process. It's got, it's, it's, and here it is there. This is the gigantic fingertip. Now, I'm going to roll this around the fingertip, around the edge. Here it goes, around, around, around. And I'm going to come down, I'm coming down the side now to where we're going to get into this next layer. Oops. I'm going to have to stop this for a second. Hold on. Actually, let's do it this way. This is the sandy part I'm going to show. And then I'm going to show this bloody layer here. And then this is the muscle layer which has all the strappy stuff. And then it has the basement layer. And then this is the, the bloody layer underneath. It's, too, it's, it's service with blood everywhere. Now just to see, I'm going to see if I can rehydrate this quickly using a, a simple technique. Hold on. I don't want to splash water over everywhere. I don't think it makes much of a difference. It's a mess here, but... Let's put a couple of rags around the edge. And then I am going to spray a little water on here and then swish it with my brush so that otherwise it's just you can't see anything. It just makes a mess. Now. Alright. It gets all over my computer screen. I was watching one of my videos the other day. I had stuff splashed all over. I said, oh, what the hell? <laughs> You see how quick that dries up? That'll be gone in a couple of seconds. Here. Now, you can see, hopefully you can see, I don't know if you can or not. But that's the sandy. Then you go into the bloody. Then you go into the muscly. And of course the tendon is back here after the gluey spot. I'll try to see if I can get a good shot of that in the microscope. And then you have the big bloody spot in the top bottom. So I would just say, I'm at the sand, I'm at the muscle, I'm at the this, I'm at the that, and, and, uh, and then we'll, you'll see up above in the microscope. Alright, this is the top layer, it's the skin. And as I come around the edge of it, you see I'm at the top and I'm coming around the edge, it changes into a different, like uh, a bloody looking texture. Okay, and then you go down a little further, and you get into the real bloodiness of it. And a little further you start to get into the, the muscle fibers. You see those are muscle fibers. Right, it's still got a little bit of moisture to it now. Um, over here you're going to see the abrupt transition. You see these little black spots? This is in the abrupt transition. And the tendon fibrils are over here and they come up to that abrupt transition just like they cut with a, a razor blade. And you can see, uh, I'm going to show you, um, I'm going to get get some better shots because it's very, I know you're probably getting seasick. <laughs> Hold on, I got some better shots. Alright, these are the tendon bundles where they break off right here and that is where they're serviced with blood. There, There's a, a bunch of them here and these are 
the tendons and they come out and they break off at that abrupt transition and these are the blocks all right now if you ever saw Finnegal's cave in Ireland or somewhere sounds like it's in Ireland <laughs> it has these things like it has the, the, the hex fiber sticking straight up and then it has a gluey spot at the top and then above that where the muscle was is gone but it is the same sort of thing as this now you see that you see how abrupt that is that's a tendon it's stuck to this glue and it is stuck there as stuck as stuck can be now they will break here and guess what they break when they look like this it's the same thing as over in Baalbek that gigantic I think they call it the pregnant lady tendon and it is identical and I'm telling you right now that's all it is they didn't cut that that just broke and at the end of that tendon there's a bunch of little holes in the center at the, of this block and that's where the blood fed out and you can see it on that, that in Baalbek those stones now let's see if I can go a little further here uh, I'm going to try to move it and see if we can see what's going on here this part is the, all of the gluey part down here. And now we're going to see if I can come down into this a little better. Alright, there we go down in there. Alright, you see this red and this black? That is infused heavily with, with a gooey black and red blood. Let me come over here. Go for it. Now you can see it better here. You see the black. This is the. This is all it is. This is a big strip of glue that holds these tendon fibrils in place. And uh, let's see. Hold on. All right. So here we are. I'm going to let it play now because here's the what we, you just saw. We these are the tendon fibrils. This is the glue. This is where it starts into the muscle, and it becomes very apparent. This is an old video I did a few years ago, but watch here. All right, here it goes. From this glue, there's the block. And there's the glue. Now we're going into the muscle. There it is right there. All right, it's very, very easy to see. Now, this is an abrupt transition. You see that? That can break there, and it could, but it did not. All right, now mineralization is, is, there's a lot of it in here. This white inclusions are the minerals that are in the fibers. Now I know I'm going in and out of here. I should probably just cut to the good spots, but I'll let it play. You can have to deal with the dizziness. Okay, now you see what it's doing here? Hold on. All right, there it is right there. See, I got two, I got another one. <laughs> these are, these holes are blood vessels and they're also holes that you in these gigantic muscles they built caves in there all right there's another abrupt transition you see that that's an abrupt transition that will break right there all right and it did not but it could it broke out here that's the final abrupt transition as it really transitions deeply into muscles so, I think I've made my point, and I think I've showed my evidence, and I don't think anybody can uh, dispute what I'm showing. All right, and there's a very final abrupt transition where the muscle really starts to take off into a week. It's weak after it's, it's um, been dried out, but it's strong as hell when it's in your, mus in your body. It will not break there. It will break at the abrupt transitions where your actual biology is changing there might be some additional uh, a CaCO3 here and then it goes into some kind of uh, a more fibrous material that gives it more flexibility and strength to create these uh, I forget what they call them uh, the little muscle blocks that pinch in and out anyway um, <laughs> so what it is what it is all right the cool thing was this is out in outer space too. Tendons, uh, comma 67P is also the exact same thing. There's the tendon fibers, and that right there, my friends, is those pinchy little bundles that I showed you in the beginning. And I have them on my 
on my specimen right here. They're identical same ones. So, outer space, and that is a, an Achilles tendon. It's Achilles tendon, it's outer space. And the other one that's in um, Ultima Thule is, uh, is a ligament attachment. There's a ball on one side and a ball on the other. This is a ball on one side going out to muscles. Ultima Thule is the attachment between two bones, a small ball and a big ball, and it snaps into a socket and snaps into a socket, and the two bones are together, like the radius and ulna or the tibia fibia, that type of thing. All right, you see that? That is a fingertip, and that fingertip is came through our atmosphere and was scorched. It scorched off all the flesh, and the last remaining red blood that was in here boiled off and exploded this side off. This is the black blood side which doesn't explode like the red blood side. And guess what? Let's take a look at what this looks like. You see that structure right there? You see that? You see this ball right here? That stalk coming up and these little fluty looking things. And that neck right there. You see that? Take a good look. Look at it close. Look very, very, very close. And look at this, which is Comet 60p, 67p. And look very, very, very close. Look very, very, very close. I have blood from outer space right there. That's blood. And I guarantee you, if you drilled into that red blood spot deep inside here, you would have something that would not be compromised if there was DNA. There'd be DNA. But I'm going to tell you right now, this came from outer space. This is biological. The Comet 67P is like three miles wide or wider than that. So that's a tendon that big. And it's in outer space. And I have to get over it, deal with these things.